Hey everyone, hope you're all doing fantastic. So this video will be my first uh, suspension variant video where I go into a specific suspension and this one will be the double wishbone suspension or double A arm or double control arm or A arm or whatever you'd like to call it. But the point is it has two control arms and that's the suspension variant I'll be going over. Uh, before you watch this, if you haven't watched my video on camber or you don't know much about camber, um, it's really important, so watch my video on camber. I should have a link on here, um, and so that'll help you out when I'm explaining this suspension variant. Alright, anyway, so basically what a double wishbone suspension is, is you've got two control arms, and they're in the shape of a wishbone, hence the name, and so these two control arms will be connected to a frame, the frame of your car, and then the front of it here is where your brake will mount on and then your wheel on top of that. So originally double wishbone suspensions used two control arms of equal length and the advantage of this is that as you have a positive or negative travel of this um, vertical or motion of the tire, um, say you're going straight and you hit a bump and the tire goes up, well your camber angle is going to stay the same when you're going straight. Now, the disadvantage is when you go around a corner, that camber angle changes because your body, the body of the car, rolls. So, what they decided to do, they being engineers, was to use a shorter upper control arm. So, as you can see in this picture, the upper control arm is shorter than the bottom one, and as you have vertical travel, now this is exaggerated, but as you have vertical travel, you'll have induced negative camber. So that's beneficial when you go around a corner. So here I'm going to look at camber as you're going around a corner. So these probably aren't the greatest uh, drawings here but it, it gets the idea across. So you're going around a corner this will be a, uh, a left corner and so the, the body's going to roll to the right. So as the body rolls to the right and you have equal, con equal length um, top and bottom control arms you're going to have positive, slight positive camber on the outside tire, which is taking most of the load, and this is bad. And you're going to have slight negative camber on the inside, which isn't carrying as much of the load. And being slightly negative, that's also a disadvantage. So, once you put on these uh, shorter upper control arms, you can see that it'll have a slight negative camber when going around that left hand corner and so the the tire will make itself flat with the road surface um, even as your body rolls and that's what you want that's exactly what you want to keep maximum amount of contact uh, with the road and then your outside or inside tire of that in that corner which doesn't have as much of the load is going to have a slight positive camber which means it will also be pressing flat against the road and that's exactly what you want have maximum contact so double wishbones with the uh, unequal control arms the top one being slightly shorter is a great suspension setup uh, some of the advantages as I've discussed you have increased negative camber with roll so as you roll more your negative camber increases and it matches it so that you're always having fantastic contact with the road um, and not all suspensions can do that, so that's one advantage of this one. Um, another thing, it can handle very large deflections. It has a large range with these control arms that they can move, so you can hit large bumps. Um, say you're doing something off-road, it's a great suspension variant for that because of how much travel it has. Now it's not quite as bulky as something like a solid axle, which if you go off-roading with it's not going to break, but it doesn't have the kind of clearance movement that you can get with a double wishbone. Uh, versatile, the reason I say versatile is because in this picture I've got the shock absorber and the spring uh, both together mounted to the lower control arm. Well it doesn't need to be like that necessarily. You can put that shock absorber on the lower and you can have a spring on this upper or you can just switch it however you want. You can change where you have that shock absorber and where you have the spring um, and so it's, it's versatile as far as placement, so if, you have, if there's something bulky in this area and you can't use it, well then move it up or change it however you want. And then also front back, so you can use a double wishbone suspension in both the front of the car, even with the steering, and in the rear of the car. So that's another advantage. 
um, some of the downsides, some of the uh, bad things of a double wishbone suspension. Well, it can be more expensive and also it has a greater number of parts. So greater number of parts means when you're working on it, it can take longer, or if you're getting it worked on, it can be more expensive to have someone uh, service it. So that's definitely a negative side. But overall, double wishbone is a great suspension variant, definitely one of the best out there. So here we have our double wishbone suspension, or double A arm, uh, and you can see the controlling arm here at the top and it's obviously a little bit smaller than this controlling arm here at the bottom and then you've got your shock absorber here connecting with the lower control arm and that's all connected to the outside tire the tires not on here we just got the disc brake but there's a basic setup of a double a arm or double wishbone suspension